be extremely careful. You can't do that just willy-nilly without risking terrible effects from it. So there are some limitations that will emerge on this technology. There is a danger, however, that you may tap too much uh, zero-point energy and then, of course, these things would heat up and explode, which has happened a few times with these devices of mine. So, in essence, uh, it's an interesting technology to get involved in, but I notice that there's some precautions one needs to take if you're having too much drawing of, from the electromagnetic jitter of, of um, zero-point energy. You're going to get a, a minor meltdown. And I had to clean this area out here once because of a minor meltdown. Would a new energy source be dangerous, for example? I would, I would say, of course you have to respect it. I mean, it's energy, so therefore, it's always potentially dangerous. It's double-edged. And I think it's, it would take a healthy respect to, to investigate it. One should be cautious. And that's, that's very reasonable. I've heard some good things. I've heard there could be health effects. There could be good effects as well as the potential for detrimental effects. I think it's like anything else. It's energy. It could be used for good. It could be used for bad. It's up to us. Perhaps because of their traditional understanding of invisible forces like chi or ki, oriental cultures, especially the techno-enthusiastic Japanese, embrace the concept of free energy. Well-respected scientists like Sinichi Siki and Zehuji Inomata are receiving substantial government and industry support. Meanwhile, the Japanese, of course, are beginning to commercially develop various systems uh, for example, uh, a Japanese consortium funds the Pones and Fleshman work. Uh, the Japanese uh, Toshiba Corporation is working with Inamata, and various other corporations are coming together to develop free energy options. And of course, Japan has no vested interest in oil. They don't have any domestic source. So it's, it's in their best interest to be the first kid on the block uh, to make little gizmos that will replace our circuit breakers and internal combustion engines. To understand this machine, uh, you need, you know, mind change, paradigm shift in yourself, you know. So far, physics, ordinary science, consider only material world. But we should think another world as an unseen world. And we should recognize that unseen world and material world is connected, connected. You know, this energy comes from the other dimension. We'll really have a true science when it is accepted in science and a true technology when all the phenomenology is thoroughly worked out and thoroughly understood, when all the models are redone so that we adequately can model this theoretically and we can do engineering. We can sit down and design the circuits, they'll work every time. We'll have components on the shelf we can buy, assemble, and they work. We're not at that stage today. We are at a stage today which is the birth of the baby. We're not at the stage where it's already a teenager running around playing, uh, playing baseball on the baseball lot. We're at the birth of the baby, and the birth is very difficult because it's opposed by so many interests. The orthodox scientific community still uh, very adamantly oppose it because they think that it's nonsense. They think that it's this old idea of perpetual motion in a closed system, creating energy from nothing. And that is nonsense. You can't do that. Uh, there are very strong and very powerful economic interests in the world, probably the strongest economic interest in the world, which are adamantly opposed to it. Uh, can you see what this does to the oil-rich nations? Uh, can you see, eventually, can you see what this will do to many things? Now, actually, what it'll do, you'll phase the oil. Petrochemical industry won't go away. You still need the oil for the materials that's in it and the chemicals and so it'll be more and more petrochemical industry rather than keep burning and wasting the oil and putting all the pollutants in the uh, biosphere. So many things will readjust. Uh, it's going to wrest control from a lot of the great wealthy control barons who now dominate uh, largely the economic world and their world is going to change. Now what you're going to see I would predict 
uh, and we'll see if history bears this out. When those barons really realize that this stuff is for real and it can be made to work, and with the internet and with free publishing and computers and everything, they can no longer contain the information. And it's very embarrassing to keep killing the inventors. That, they stopped that about 15 years ago. Uh, at some point, you're going to see an overwhelming availability of funds become available. When the funds become available, the scientists will change over into it because they go where the money goes. They're bought and paid for, simple as that. You can't do research unless you've got the funds. You cut off the research grants, professor gets without a job. He, he leaves the university. And so science is simply bought and paid for in this country and much of the world. When the money goes, the science will go to it. Now that will put the sharp young graduate students on it finally with some funds to do the experiments and work on their doctorates and so forth. You will have a very rapid assimilation and advancement of a totally new and extended electromagnetic science at the time. You get to a certain stage in scientific development sometimes to stages where you're faced with problems and barriers and you sort of forced to rethink and go in different directions. I think we're seeing that one of those peculiar time periods in the history of science where we're going to overturn some cherished models, not, not too much, but make some changes and they'll open the door to an enormous amount of new technology in electricity and magnetism in nuclear reactions in motor development in battery applications, in space flight, and perhaps in anti-gravity. Uh, I think there are, in, in creating scarce elements from plentiful elements, I think we have just reached a plateau now where the, the world's door is opening to, what, a millennium of new science? We're talking about real life hardware. We're talking about experiments in science that are telling us beyond any reasonable doubt that we have technologies that will enable us to be free from the bondage that we now feel, free from uh, some of these economic uh, constraints that we've created for ourselves. Because you see, if energy is free, and it will be very shortly, food is free, housing is free, then we're free to create our, our express our creative gifts and not be like drones. And we're also free to explore our greater selves. And it's going to be a very exciting time coming up. The future of the world, as seen by conventional thinkers, or even many far-reaching thinkers, is uh, tame compared to what a coal fusion and free energy is going to do. No aspect of human culture will be untouched by the, this energy revolution. The very fact that the material that covers 70% of the, the, the planet's surface will now be available as a fuel source. And the, and the uh, fact that water makes up a, a huge percentage of our bodies, and this is a fuel and a source of energy, this is going to have incredible uh, psychological and religious and historical and geopolitical implications. The Middle East uh, picture and the strength of the uh, oil interest there is going to be drastically altered. Uh, air pollution will be abolished in most cities that are now affected by the internal combustion engine. And uh, space travel, which is a favorite subject of mine, will be transformed. The ability to travel to the planets and to the stars will be um, given a gigantic boost, one that I never in my lifetime expected uh, as an engineer who deals with those things. Some people are saying that the title of my book, The Coming Energy Revolution, is uh, a bit fearsome, that uh, revolution implies a sudden radical change, and that uh, the status quo uh, will suffer, and uh, that people whose jobs depend on the status quo will, will suffer. Uh, so perhaps evolution is a uh, better to way, way to look at it. But one way or another, our leaders, our political leaders, our uh, business leaders, our utility company executives have to address the changeover to clean energy sources. And it'll probably come from abroad, so it probably will happen 